Shalom Aleichem. Look at the Sichas, volume 23, 22. Tazria, Sicha number two. So the Rebbe begins the Sicha by explaining that the idea of Taras, which not to be mistaken for leprosy, it's not a skin disease at all. It's a spiritual malady that only came to, uh, by a miraculous fashion, that Hashem would send a message to a person that they need to mend their ways, specifically for Lashon Hara. And um, it's not leprosy at all, it's saras. So the Rebbe says that if you look at it, there seem to be two conflicting sides to it. One side of it, the way I'm presenting it, it's not such a big deal. It's a problem or it's a small problem. It's a tzaddik's problem. And the other side of it is, what do you mean? This is terrible. Which one is it? <laughs> because on the face of it, let's start with the right column. Saras so comes for the sin of Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is terrible. We look at all the Svarim, including Rambam, as we're going to see soon. Lashon Hara is akin to the three cardinal sins. And it represents that you're rotten to the core, you're evil, you're jealous, you're, you're lustful, you're terrible, you're, you're angry, you're, you're a total mess, you're ruining people's lives, you think that Hashem doesn't know, it's like denying God. You are bad news, cardinal sin. And as it's explained that people think that the, what do they do? They just said a few words. You could destroy someone's life and livelihood with saying a few words. And that's, I think, why it's also akin to denying God, because you think God doesn't know. Other well, humans don't realize what you did. You destroyed his livelihood. You destroyed, God forbid, his marriage, his family, his personal life. You name it by saying a couple of words. Hashem knows. So it's bad news. It's not not okay. It's terrible <laughs> But then you look in Taras. So that's how Lashon Hara is described. Taras, which is the sin, the punishment and the sign that you need to, that you have sinned in Lashon Hara, is described to be something not so bad. It's a, it's a problem of righteous people. And that's why, as explained, you can see on the left column, that the term in the Torah used for Taras is Adam. That's how the chapter begins in today's Pasha. Adam, Adam, a person will have this malady. There are four titles for mankind in the Torah. Adam, Ish, Gever, Enosh. And they describe different descriptions of mankind. Ish is emotion, usually. I think that's the most commonly used term in the Torah, Ish. Because the person is the emotion. Gever is your physical strength. Enosh represents the weakness in a person. Adam is the highest title. It represents a person who's who's mind based, who's objective based. Adam uh, is from the word Adam Elion, in the sense that we are compared to our Creator, uh, that we are like the likeness of Hashem. You know what I mean? It's 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 the highest title. Why would we use such a term? So the Alter Rebbe explains in the Kutte Torah that this term is used because that's what happened to. It. It didn't happen to low level people, Ish people, Gever, Enish people. It happened to Adam people. People who you look at them and you see that they're the image of Hashem. Let's call it tzaddikim. That's who it happened to. And the Alter Rebbe further explains, and the Rebbe says this is echoed by the Al Sheikh and others, that, that this is a skin deep disease. It only has someone who has skin deep flaws. And that's why it doesn't happen nowadays after the Beis Hamidrash was destroyed. During Beis Hamidrash times, there were people. I guess it wasn't uncommon. It wasn't just, you know, the one tzaddik of the generation. It wasn't uncommon for people to be on that level of Adam, where their their emotions completely purified, their character is, is okay. They were refined, a high-level human being, an Adam person, but on a skin-deep level, exterior, in terms of speech, let's call it, they're lacking. They don't realize the power of the speech and the power of the exterior. It's a flaw on the outside, skin-deep. And therefore, they were sent a sign because they deserve it. They're so good. And that's why it doesn't happen anymore. So these points are made by the Alter Rebbe. So you're talking about a righteous person who's called Adam, who we don't have anymore today. He's only skin deep problematic. He gets hit with Taras. Taras is referred to as one of the worst impurities. And you're sent out of the camp. Some impurities, you can stay in the camp. Some impurities, you have to go out of the, the Holy Temple. You have to go out of the com camp completely, not just the temple, not just... The Machani Yisrael, the whole Jewish camp, you have to leave or leave the city in temple days. It's bad news. 
says a leper, Matzera, Chashev Kemes, is like dead. And it comes from Lashon Hara, which we know from the column B on our screen, represents akin to the three sins. So which one is it? That's the Rebbe's question. You know, the in my community here, people will sometimes ask me, what about the sins of the righteous? We talk about in Tanya, at Tzadik, it's a high level. You're not capable of sin, or, or what have you. The king's the sin of David Amalek, King David, the sin of Moshe Rabbeinu, you know what I mean? Abraham Avinu. And uh, one of the things I said to them is that, you know, when I was a kid, so so my uh, one of my uncles took me to a ball game, to a baseball game. And I was very excited to go to the baseball game. And uh, somebody hit the ball, and the outfielder made an error. It was counted as an error because he, so my, uh, and we were angry at the outfielder. How could you make this error? <laughs> so my teacher said, that's a $3 million error. My uncle said, that's a $3 million error. You can't make that error. Whatever it meant, he ran the 200 feet. That he, 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 that's an error on a major league. That's an error. For me and you, it's not even in the ballpark. When you talk about the errors of Tzadikim, I tell people, just remember, there's a major league error. The Taylor speaks in the same language as us, as if we're a machutin, that we understand that they sin and we sin just because we're supposed to learn lessons from it. But it's a whole different arena. So similarly here, normally Russian and Horus, it's, it's a bad thing. You're evil, you're corrupt, you're jealous, you're a mess, you don't believe in Hashem, you hate people, you're bad. Or is it, as the left column seems to describe, you're, you're a major leaguer, you're a tzaddik, and on some fine level, there's imperfection. So this is a big contradiction. So the Rebbe is going to introduce, and again, the sicha, what's interesting about the sicha is you read it, it, it it's a relatively easy sicha. It's not long, and it's not so difficult to understand the difference that Rebbe makes. And so you have to step back and realize, though, there's a tremendous innovation here. Yeah, it's, the Rebbe comes up with a very clear distinction between these two columns, and we'll explain to it that there's two types of Lash and Hara. They both use the same term in Torah and in Halacha, but they're two very different meanings, and it's a very innovative thing. I don't know if it's brought in any other smart. It's a very innovative thing, which gives us a whole different understanding of, 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 of Lash and Hara. So let's first look at the Rambam. The Rebbe analyzes in the Sikha, the Rambam, that we find the, the concept of Lashon Hara discussed twice. We find it in Hilchas Deus. This is the book of Rambam that we're studying now. Laws of character trait. And it says, as you see in the first paragraph on the screen, our sages said, three sins with retributions exacted in this world, and you're denied a portion of the world to come. I don't worship forbidden sexual relations and murder Lashon Hara is equivalent to them all. Anyone who speaks Lashon Hara is like what denies God. It's relatively short. It just rules it out. It's like bad, bad, capital B. Then you go to the Rambam in the book of Tara of Purity and the laws of Tumas Saras. Over there, it's not so short. It's a whole long thing. It goes on and on. And, um, and basically it says, first of all, it describes what happened to Miriam. Take a look at that first paragraph. Remember what happened to Miriam? She spoke against her brother. And the Rambam wants to describe that she did it innocently. The brother was older than her. She raised him. She endangered herself to save him. She didn't speak majority of him. She merely erred that Moses was, and Moses didn't care because he was humble. What happened with Miriam? She wasn't angry. She wasn't, uh, there was no jealousy or hate. She loved Moshe Rabbeinu. She saved him. She was a prophet. She mm -hmm. made him, that just like she and Aaron are also prophets, they were able to be married. Now what gives Moshe a right not to be married? After she found out from, from Tzipporah by accident, uh, that 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 Moshe had separated himself from her after Har Sinai. So this is not coming from a bad place. There's no bad intention here at all. And yet, this high-level tzaddikist is punished with Taras. Says the Rambam, watch out for it. And then he goes through a whole long narrative. Let's read it. This is the path that followed by the gathering of wicked fools. They speak excessively about empty matters and negative. Then they'll speak about the righteous. And they speak against the prophets. And they cast aspersions on their words. And then they come to deny Hashem. And this is the speech of the wicked caused by loitering the street corners, frequenting assemblies of commoners, spending time at parties of drunkards. 
contrast, the speech of the proper Jewish people concerns Torah and wisdom. So the Rebbe says, compare these two sources in the Rambam. The first one is very straightforward. What's Lash and Hara? Gossip. It's evil. Period. It's not about a slippery slope. The second one is, this could happen to the best people. Miriam, there's no bad intention. This is not a kin to denying God. Miriam doesn't deny God. She's a prophet. And yet, it could be dangerous. And the Ramam starts talking about all kind of other bad speech not related to gossip. Gathering of the wicked, emboldening some of them, speaking excessively about nothing. What does that have to do with Lashon Hara? Speech of the wicked, loitering in the street corners, hanging around with assemblies, with parties. What does this have to do with Lashon Hara? And then he finishes by saying, but the speech of the Jewish people, proper speech, like this is a whole essay on proper speech and improper speech, way beyond the scope of Lashon Hara. But isn't Saras for Lashon Hara? It doesn't, the Rebbe is asking, why is this here? And the Rebbe says, true, all types of improper speech is improper and unkosher. But that shouldn't be in the laws of Taras. Taras is from Lashon Hara. That should be in the laws of proper character, in the laws of character. In fact, in the, the top of the screen where the Ramam talks about the character trait, Ramam wants to speak about speech, put it in there. In fact, the, the Rebbe says that in chapter 7, in the laws of character, in chapter 7, in the laws of, of, of Deus, proper character, is an entire section about speech. Rebbe speaks about character and how to behave and etc. How to spend your money, how to spend your time, right? There's an entire section in chapter 7 about proper speech. Speak smart, speak soft, don't be argumentative, etc., etc. It's not just about Lashon Hara. It's a whole subject in Judaism. That's where this section should belong. Proper speech, etiquette in speech, refinement in speech, not speaking uh, idle talk and excessiveness, talking about stuff that's nothing. But this has nothing to do with Sarah, seemingly, because it's not about Lashon Hara squarely. It's just about not speaking inappropriately. So if it belongs in Rambam, it should have been in the laws of character. Why is it in the longer Tsaras, which should be all about Lashon Hara? So the Rebbe is going to come along and say that Lashon Hara in Rambam and in Torah and in Judaism has two meanings. Obviously related, but two meanings. One is evil talk that comes from jealousy and it hurts people. It's just a bad thing. And then the same term is used for a much more benign usage. And that is inappropriate speech. Not using your speech correctly. There's no bad intention. You could be Miriam. However, watch out for that. And that is where Tsaras comes from. And that's why Tsaras only happens to righteous people and it's only skin deep and it's a person that's on the high level of Adam and it only happened in temple days. And who's an example of Tsaras? Miriam. Who's an example of Tsaras? Moshe Rabbeinu. When, he, when his hand became Tsaras, yes, Lashon Hara, but Lashon Hara had a whole different meaning. Not being careful, no bad intention. Just like the Rambam goes through pains to explain that Miriam had zero bad intention. Because he's trying to point out this won't happen to some just bad, evil, bad guy who, who hates people and is jealous of everybody and wants to hurt them, God forbid. They're not going to get Saras anytime soon. Saras? Adam. No bad intention, etc., etc. But you're not so careful with how you speak. And it starts with something benign like speaking excessively and nonsensical, etc. And hanging around the wrong people that do that. That's what we're talking about. It's brilliant. And it's right in the Rambam. Once the Rebbe points it out to us, it's right in the Rambam. And that's why this entire narrative is in the laws of Taras and not just in the laws of character. Obviously, it's bad character. But this is in the laws of Taras because we're talking about keeping somebody on a high level of, 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 of character, staying away from Lashon Hara. And that's what Taras is talking about. So let's now come back and put up the two columns. So... We're going to mirror these two columns, as we said before, the left column being the benign form of Lashon Hara, the right one being the bad news column of Lashon Hara, to the two Ramahs that we just explored. So if you look at the right column, it's a cardinal sin. Whereas in the left column, as we said, it's only a slippery slope. He says, watch out, you'll hang around the wrong people. 
They'll talk, and they're not talking bad. They're just talking nonsense, excessive talk. But it's a slippery slope. So we see two very different descriptions of Lash and Hara, the same sin. It's obviously a different meaning of the word. And that these two lines that I'm bolding, I think are very, very important, perhaps the most important to make a distinction. What is the cause and what is the result? In the left, the right column, when we're talking about actual Lashon Hara gossip, the cause is evil character. This ain't happening to Miriam, <laughs> as the Rebbe explains in detail. It's just an evil person. He's so evil that he won't even do something bad. He wants you to be hurt just by speech, so he feels vindicated. And nobody knows that he really destroyed you. And the result is he damaged people. Straight out damaged people. This is bad, rotten to the core. Whereas in the left column, the cause is innocent, careless speech. There isn't any bad intention. In the case of Miriam, it's actually a good intention. But at least it's no bad intention. And it's not so much that you're hurting others. You're hurting yourself. This is a much higher level. This is a, a major league error. You're a tzaddik. If you're a adam, understand. And watch out for your power of speech. It's so deep. It's so special. As I explained in Chassidus, that speech triggers the soul. People think of speech as just, I just said it. No. Speech is a big deal. It's the title of the human being is speech, right? In the four categories of creation, domain, inanimate, so meach, plant, Chai, the living being, which is the animal. And then the, the human is described as middaber, the speaking species. You would think the title of the human would be sikhli, intellectual, or free choice, being. No, it's middaber, and it's explained in Hasidus, and the Rebbe gives in the footnote, a famous sikh from Chelek Vav, bro, that really the human being's speech, the idea we can communicate, the idea that we're bigger than our own selves, we can connect with others, that's like sort of an infinity. Whatever the reason is, speech seemingly is just external. It's really rooted very, very deep in the essence. And that's why the entire human being is described as a speaking species. And it's brought down in Hasidus. Uh, again, this is from the footnotes. When you, when, you, when, you, when you speak, it evokes the emotion. We all know Komer Rakavana, the voice of davening evokes the emotion. If a person is angry, it says, if he keeps talking, the anger will grow. If he's quiet, the anger will dissipate. The same thing if he's talking words of love. Words, all he's doing is speaking. So external. I can just say two plus two is 20. I can say two plus two is purple. I can say something I don't believe. But the truth is that it's not meaningless. Because speech will evoke the emotion. The anger will grow, etc., etc. And therefore, therefore, Rambam in the laws of Tzaras is speaking to this high-level person, to the to the Miriam, to the Moshe, etc., and saying, you're not capable of speaking bad and hurting people. That's just not in your life. But understand that this thing of speech, even on some subtle level, and with all good intention, and maybe it's just you're just saying hello to the wrong people and excessive speech, it is a very precious gift. It's like a diamond. Don't play with it. It's deep. It touches the soul. It's not about hurting others, it's hurting yourself. And then he continues, it could be a slippery slope to other evils. But it's a whole different level. It's a very fine sin. It's only an Adam level sin. And this explains the Rebbe is why the Rambam also points out, which is brought in Rashi, that there's various stages of Taras. That, and the, there's the house, there's the clothing, there's the, the furniture, the clothing, and the person. And it's explained in Rashi, and the Rambam says it in detail in the laws of Tzaraz. That if the person is abusing their speech, first the house gets hit. If they don't get the message, the furniture, etc. If they don't get the message, then the clothing. If they don't get the message, then they get hit and they're put outside the camp so they don't continue this. So the Rebbe says, what's this slippery slope? I think the question is, if this is evil, so right away, it, it should hit, hit you. It should hit your skin. You're a bad person. It, it, it's akin to the three sins. So right away, you should hit the skin. What's this whole uh, gradation thing? And the answer is because we're talking about a very fine level of abuse of speech. So it starts only with the house, which means that it's not even on your flesh. It's not even skin deep by you. It's somewhere distant. You're, you're in the wrong environment. 
And then it comes down to your furniture, then it comes to your clothing, and it slowly could come closer to you because this is, again, concept of stages, says the Rebbe. That's why the Rambam is giving all those details in his book of Halacha. Like, why does he need this? All the details of the different stages because it's it is a very much a gradation thing. It's very much about the slippery slope. It's very much about talking to a high-level person and saying, watch out. Not don't gossip and hurt people. Watch out with your speech. It's very, very deep in your soul. It's precious. It's almost like not focusing so much on how bad it is, but how precious it is. Not don't do something bad. He doesn't want to do anything bad. But make sure to give it the right respect. Don't even abuse it in the most benign way because it's a precious gift. And that's why Rambam brings Miriam's example because of that. So the bottom line becomes that one column is about innocent, careless speech. And the other one is about gossip. And it's a whole different, uh, different thing. And therefore, it makes sense. If the Rebbe answered all our questions. Uh, once we understand these two very, very different meanings of the same word, Lashon Har. What's the takeaway from this? So, I know I give this share in my community and people say, Rabbi, you know, Rabbi, we're not a tzaddik, so why do we need to know this? We're reading the whole portion, this Shabbos and next Shabbos, and then we have the Rambam, we have the Sikha. What does it have to do with me? If you told me that's a rasa about Lashon Hara, this is my people in the Shir asking. So I understand it, because I know what Lashon Hara is. I have an urge, like most people, to speak Lashon Hara, most people whose character is flawed deeply. But if you tell me Lashon Hara is talking about this level person, Adam, Miriam, Moshe, skin deep, and it's about watching out for the thing is me. Why do I have to learn about this? So when people ask the question, you have to think about it. And to me, I think the Rebbe is teaching us, you and I, who are plain people, that we too should appreciate the value of speech. You know, I remember growing up around the Rebbe, the Rebbe was always moving his lips. The Rebbe would walk into shul before anything started, his lips are moving. The Rebbe would walk down the street. Very often the Rebbe's lips were moving. Tzaddikim always spent time moving, saying letters of Torah. Um, and uh, I think on both sides, obviously in the negative, to understand the power of even benign talk, that it's meaningful. I don't know that we're on that level, that we're not going to talk just nonsensical stuff, but to appreciate the value of being careful with speech, even in a benign way. Let's talk on our level. Sometimes we tend to exaggerate. We want to make the story sound nice. So we change the truth a little bit. We're not hurting anybody. Nobody's being hurt. I heard a good story on the WhatsApp, and I embellish it. I make it into a bigger miracle. I heard a true story about the Rebbe, and I embellish it. and blow it up so that it's wow. Nobody is hurt by it. Maybe in my weird thinking, somebody's helped by it. Because I'm going to create it. I'm going to make the Rebbe look bigger. I'm going to look to Ashkach and Pratis look bigger. No one's hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm a puppet rabbi. So my job is to, to make things sound like wow. And I'm taking the sikh to heart. <laughs> yeah. It's good to inspire people with your speech. But if you're saying something that's not true, that's etc., et, et, et you're not hurting anybody, but you're hurting yourself. Speech is the soul. If you make up a story and you present it as if it's really true, you lied. That means no one was hurt. And you made a nice sermon. But your soul just was involved with a lie. And speech is the soul. That's what the Sikh is saying. So this is my own personal homework. But I'm suggesting that all of us on our own level, today we're in the world of WhatsApp. Everybody's a pulpit rabbi. Everybody is sending out. We don't have to embellish. It's not okay. Not because it's going to be terrible. It's bad for us. Speech is neshama. And then on the good side, this I think is very useful, and this was, this resonated with my sicha shir here, and that is that so much of Judaism involves speech, davening, learning. Often people sit and wonder, every day I have to say the same words. It's about feeling. I have to say every single word of every ashray and every hallelujah and every word of the Shema and every word of Tehillim. Shabbos Vavarchim, I'm saying till him, I don't understand a word I'm saying. And that's okay. But it's so important to say the words. 
Think the concepts, feel it, study some Torah. Mizokt Werter, Judaism, if you're an active Jew, if you're a serious Yid, especially if you're a Chassid, you're moving your lips a heck of a lot every single day. Much of the time, mindless, for good or bad. <laughs> you know, you're saying the preparation Kitores before Mincha. I don't know how many of us are thinking about the meaning of every single word. I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, do, that we should do it mindlessly, but a lot of it is mindless, especially we're saying till we don't even know what it means. And that's considered okay, the power of the words. Well, what's the point? Aha, that's the point. Words? Not shayotza b'dabre. I believe it's in Song of Songs. Your soul comes out when you speak. Speech is the soul's revelation in a miraculous way. It's like the outer skin reflects the deepest essence. And therefore, there's no such thing as wasting speech, and there's no such there's no such thing as a, suddenly we see the value again in the negative, but I think more relevant for people like us in the positive, saying a word of tehillim and a word of davening and saying it meticulously and carefully. I understand it. I don't understand it. I'm totally focused. I'm not focused. That itself is huge. Our soul is training and training and expressing its essence in practicality through the speech.